first book is We Hunt the Flame, and the second is We Free the Stars, and they are part of the Sands of Aralia duology. And so it's the first book and the finale, like it all happened way too quickly. Like I'm not ready to say goodbye to these characters, but here I am. Unlike most authors, I wasn't always a writer. I didn't start writing as soon as I could hold a pen. Um, my foray into writing was a lot more gradual. I started when I was 17, um, and that was when I got into reading young adult literature. I picked up a number of books before I realized that I could relate to these on some minuscule level. and. And then eventually I realized that I could write a book too, like I could give this a try. I've been reading so much that I might be able to make it work. I found myself connected to and drawn to fantasy where these stories where characters were like riding on horses into, into faraway lands and forests and kingdoms and all of that stuff. It's, these are stories that people can't relate to except on an emotional level. Like we don't live those lives. Those are completely out there, far out there. And that was why I was always drawn to fantasy. And I realized that there are so many other kids like me who just didn't, who just couldn't find themselves in contemporary and couldn't connect to them and that they might find their home in fantasy. Representation is very, very important, um, not just for one culture, but for everyone, because the world, the world of literature should reflect the world around us. And so when I was writing and when I was reading as a younger teen, I, I didn't, see people like me and then if I did it was always well either like we were demonized or even romanticized and that just didn't sit well because that's not who we are every time we see a person of color doing something we feel like we automatically assume that it has to do with their struggle or something that they've been suffering through like I didn't well, I didn't want to do that I wanted to grow a platform where and grow a fan base where people were just picking up my book because they were looking for a new fantasy world to escape into, a new adventure to experience. Seeing my book in person for the first time was, I, I don't remember what I was feeling, except that it was like a mashup of so many emotions. Like I had been writing for a, a number of years, I think um, nine years before We Hunt the Flame, landed on my doorstep. Like it was, it got published when I was 26 and I'd been writing since I was 17. It was an almost 10 year journey. And then this book was going to be my last attempt at publication. I just thought, let me just try it one last time. And then it happened. My sisters and I used to, because I was a blogger before, I used to sit down with them and like, look at, oh, okay, this book hit the list. Oh, we were, we, we knew this one would hit and we would just sit every week. And so the week after We Hunt the Flame come, came out, we were sitting and refreshing Twitter and social media to see like if anyone has posted the list and no one had been posting it. Like it usually goes up the minute, um, the second it comes out. And then a few minutes later, my, my editor just texted me. She was like, it's number five. So I was, I just blanked like number five, what does that mean? And then a couple seconds later, she called me and like the whole team was on the other end screaming and cheering that, okay, it hit the New York Times bestselling list at number five. And it was, it was a really crazy moment. And one of my favorite from the whole journey. It's funny because the day that I got the email saying I was nominated for Forbes, I had also just gotten, just learned that um, We Hunt the Flame, my first book, made Times 100 best fantasy of all time. And I thought, okay, this is it. I've peaked. I'm not, I can't possibly get Forbes as well. So I sent in the requested information and I didn't tell anyone in my family. I was like, okay, it's not going to work. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. And then one month later, I woke up um, and groggily checked my email and there was this like bright and colorful email from Forbes saying, congratulations, you've made it. And it was just um, mind-blowing, astounding. Like, I'm glad that they are taking into consideration people of color and then the extra hurdles that we have to go through to get to where we are. Um, so it was very exciting to see.